Hi, Jed from Cook Culture. Today I'm going to show you how to take a dry and black and crusty carbon steel fry pan and fix it and make it beautifully smooth and ready to go. Okay, so when your pan was new and you took it home, it looked like that. Beautiful, crisp, clean, ready to be used. You were very excited. Over time, you cooked and you cooked and you cooked, and maybe at one point in time, you got it just perfect. It was nice and golden, the surface was nice and smooth, everything was working great. And then gradually over time, it started to get more like that, blackened, charred, flaking, and pretty yucky. So this is normal. Don't despair. We're going to fix this up. OK, in my last video on carbon steel, I took a new carbon steel Mineral B 8-inch fry pan, and I seasoned it three times in the oven. So it was oven pre-seasoning method. What I did was get that pan ready to go to be cooked with the first time easy to follow. The instructions are right above if you want to click on that video and see how to do this from fresh new. But what will happen is you will start using this pan and then it's, you need to maintain it. And that is post seasoning. So what happens after? Post seasoning, really, really easy. You take a cleaned pan that you have run some water in, you've cleaned it with a chainmail scrubby, you put a little bit of buzzy wax paste and you rub it in, heat it up. That's post seasoning dries, ready to go. What will happen over time if this pan gets kind of abused? And that means really high temperature cooking. That means not cleaning it very well with a chain mail or something that is not abrasive, but is strong enough to get the carbonated food off. It will start to cook more and more on. And it also, if you're using the wrong oils, and this is where fruit based oils like avocado or olive oil that have fiber in them. They're fibrous oils. So seed oils that have no fiber don't have a tendency to cook down and leave the fiber on the pan that then carbonizes once it's cooked and sticks and becomes a blackened surface. So this pan here is that example. It's been abused. It's black. It's gnarly. It's got texture all over it. It's dry. It's flaking. It's just in brutal shape. There's no way we can go forward with this pan. We have to go backwards. And what that means is that we need to clean this. So we're going to take a metal scrubby and we're going to use Barkeeper's Friend. I don't love using Barkeeper's Friend, but it works really, really well for this because we got to cut this carbon out of here. So we're going to take this to the sink and we're going to put some solid work into reclaiming this pan. And then we're going to pre-season, so the starting seasoning, through the oven method and get it fresh and ready to go again. So off to the sink. Okay, so we're at the sink. I'm running some hot water. I've got my fantastic orange gloves on here. The reason for it is that Barkeeper's Friend that does this job is really drying to the hands. I don't like this on my hands at all, but we are going to get this pan that is just gnarly cleaned up and it's going to take some solid work, right? So I've got to realize that if you let your pans get like this, you got to pay that price and you got to clean it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to warm the surface. You could even put this in the oven to really try to warm up the surface. That would help. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to put in some work, get my arm workout today. And so I'm going to get it wet. I'm going to leave a little bit of water in there just so there's probably a couple of tablespoons of water in there, take some barkeepers. I'm going to put in not a ton, maybe a tablespoon to start with. And then I'm going to take my larger chainmail scrubby. This is the one with the silicone in the middle. This is a field scrubby. I really like the field one also, but it's actually much more gentle than this one. And so I'm going to use this one because it's a little bit stronger 
and I can really get my hand on it to this job. So I'm gonna take, make it a little bit of a paste with this stuff. I don't want it too runny, but I also don't want it too dry. So I'm gonna go around and get this all over. This will also just start kind of eating at the surface. I already need some more. So I'm gonna get this all around and just start to give it a scrubbing. I find if I go too hard right away, it doesn't do much. You need to get this stuff over. You don't wanna let the barkeeper dry on here. You wanna keep it moist. Drying doesn't do anything. When it stays moist, it's activated, I guess, and it works much, much better. So what I'm gonna do now is just continue to go around and get this kind of worked in, and then I'm gonna actually really start leaning into it and putting in some weight. So it will take me quite a bit of work, and I'm going to uh, have to really just put in the elbow grease, because it's the only way to do it. I have had customers use uh, oven cleaner on it. <laughs> oven cleaner, again, is pretty harsh and toxic, um, but I've had people that have told me that it's actually worked quite well. So I don't know if I recommend that or not. I'm just saying what I've been told. So I will continue working on this and we'll get this stripped down. All right, so just gonna take a quick break here and show you where we're at. So that's come off pretty quickly, a couple of minutes there. And so you can still see that we got a lot around the edge, but we're getting the body off is which really matters. There's always gonna be some marking up here because I really don't care enough to put in the time to take that off. You know, with one inch up and the body, that's what I'm really working on. This here, the damage is done, gonna leave it there, not a big deal. Um, and like, if I really wanted to, and also point to make, I have seen some people use electric power tools to do this. You wouldn't wanna really deeply scour the metal, but that can work too. I'm not opposed to somebody trying that for sure. So I'm gonna continue on and try to get more of this off. solid work. It uh, is best not to let your pans get like this because it, it takes a lot of work. Like I said, oven cleaner maybe work better, but uh, that's the way in which I've always done it. It's a good solid effort. You know, that was probably 10 minutes to get it down. All of this here, this is totally fine. I, it's like up around here, not a problem. This is all just some staining in the corners here. It's smooth everywhere, everything that really kind of matters. So everywhere that I'm gonna now season is going to be fine. I've cleaned up the back a little bit. I'm gonna season it a little bit more. This around here is a little bit nasty. I might actually clean that just a little bit more just because I'm anal about that. Um, but I've just cleaned the back just to get that real texture. This is the only place on the pan right here that it was harder for me to get that still has any texture left. So I'm gonna nail that and then we're gonna get it back over and get it ready to be post, or sorry, we're gonna get it ready to be pre-seasoned. We're gonna pre-season it in the oven. Okay, so we put in some hard work. This is an extreme example. This pan that I showed you and what I just did, that's an extreme example. That's the far end. This pan, unfortunately, was used by a chef in one of our cooking studios who thought he knew how to maintain carbon steel pans. So 
The maintenance of carbon steel pans is delicate. It's easy. It's not a problem. It's not stressful. He would bake these things for hours and I wasn't sure what he was trying to accomplish, but what he would do is use the wrong oil and bake them for way too long and cook tons of food and not get them clean properly, not train people how to wash them properly. And over time, they became like that. And that's just poor use and poor maintenance. And not to take anything on chefs, but that was from a chef who a lot of lay people think, hey, chefs know how to do everything with all cookware. Not exactly true. If you've only used nonstick your whole life, it's really hard to understand exactly what to do with carbon steel and cast iron. So this pan is now heating up on the element. I've got it on a six. What I'm gonna do here is take some of our buzzy wax and I'm going to get it all over the pan and make it shiny. It's still you know, a bit textury up top there, which isn't awesome, but it is what it is. I just didn't feel like putting another 20 minutes of cleaning into it. So around I go on the fresh, clean carbon steel, get a nice layer all around. And what we have here also, there's some, I tried cleaning this off. The heat, the overheat from the element and from the flame has started to crack the epoxy on the handle here, which is kind of crappy, just from abuse, not you being used properly. You do not need to use anything at ridiculous high temperatures, right? Like it's just not the way in which food is intended to be cooked on the stove. So, We'll get the wax all around on where it's a bit exposed here. And then what we're gonna do is put that into the preheated oven. We got 475 degree oven. It's preheated. And we're gonna put this in the oven inverted and we're gonna bake it for one hour. And we're gonna end up doing this three times. But we're gonna get this in for the first one hour. And here it goes. Okay, so while that pan is seasoning, I just wanted to go over the essential tools in which I use for maintaining cast iron. So to get a pan to stay as beautiful and as clean as this one here, I clean with chain mail. So we've got the field chain mail that is really quite delicate, wraps around your fingers really nicely, easy to get into the corners and clean, really love it. And also we have the sponge. So this is a, a much bigger loop. Uh, it's, uh, they both work similarly, I find that, that maybe for some of the more stubborn stuff, strangely, the smaller loop does a better job. Um, but for daily cleaning on most everything, this works well. Not only cast iron, but all other cookware. I find that it's great for getting anything off. So chainmail, critical. Then post seasoning on the daily, I've got my Buzzy Wax. I've got it stored in a really nice little stasher bag here. So Buzzy Wax, that is a beeswax seasoning paste, is what you need, it's critical. It's not critical. You can use all other types of seed oils. I love it. So it's not critical, but I love it. It works really, really well. It adheres beautifully, leaves a beautiful golden seasoning, and I apply it with a cotton rag, just a, a piece of, of excess rag that you have. Cut it off. This is like, you know, yay big. It's all kind of stuck together, getting kind of manky. And I just fold it up. It's kind of stinky on the inside. Um, I fold it up and stick it into my bag and it is a bit stinky um, of beeswax. It's not a bad smell, it's just quite powerful. So it's nice to go away and sealed in there. I have used a uh, Ziploc bag that works really well too. I just find this really nice, neat and tidy. So those are the tools in which you need for maintaining carbon steel. Okay, so it's been in there for just over an hour. We're gonna check that one out. Be really, really careful because it's super hot. And over she goes. And they are looking pretty good. What I'm going to do, so pan is 
looking fine. It's got, let's grab this guy here. She is hot. So looking good, golden, all over. So that's what we want. And now that it's really nice and hot, pipe and hot, just come out like that. I'm going to get my buzzy wax out and I'm gonna hit it while it's hot. So this will, it's gotten fairly dry in the oven, so it's, it's kind of cooked it on, polymerized it, taken all the moisture out. So it's really nice and dry. So it's so hot here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I've got some evaporation coming. It's not really smoke. It's the moisture that's coming out of the Buzzy Wax. So around she goes, and that is looking Fine. So I'm, uh, I'm really happy with how that uh, turned out. That was kind of one go in the oven. I would maybe do another go, um, but you know, it's from a pan that's got three on it to this one, it's looking fine. So this pan is not as a nice shape as this pan here. Its handle definitely has gotten really heavily scorched from work on the stove top, but I've been able to get the inside to a really nice shape. You know, it's still got some marking, but this pan's gonna work very, very well. So this is seasoned, ready to go, ready to be used, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. So, you know, it, I took it right down, um, so it was to bare metal. So letting it completely cool, and then put some fuzzy wax on it again, and then back into the oven for another full hour, and then out and fully cool, it'll just go darker that much more and build up another bonded surface. I've already attached, as you can see, the Buzzy Wax, so that could just go right into the oven once it's completely cooled. So I hope that works on repairing a really damaged Debayer Mineral B. Hopefully your pan will be nowhere close like that, but same process for taking the surface down and rebuilding it in the oven. Okay, so here's a quick point to make on a Debayer Mineral B when it has been abused in an oven. So this is the damage that will occur from a broiler. This handle has been way too close to the broiler and this is what will happen. So if you're not careful, that will happen. And as I put my hand on it, it's rough and it's uncomfortable. It's still fine, it'll work, but it's not very comfortable. It's a really thrash pan. This pan is in horrible, horrible shape, just being thrashed by a user. This unfortunately could be sanded to a point to be smoother, but the epoxy started to come off. But this pan, fortunately at some point in time, I will get around to repairing.